Welcome back, President Abdel Fattah Sisi said he is looking forward with pride to the inauguration of the COP27 in Egypt. Speaking on the social media, Sisi expressed hope the event will come out of the face of uh, promises to swift tangible results on the ground and to lay down a roadmap for the climate action. He also said the conference is being held at a very critical time. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi received on Sunday in Sharm el-Sheikh the executive manager of the International Monetary Fund, Kristalina Georgieva, and her accompanying delegation. The talks were attended by Prime Minister Dr. Mustafa Medbouli, Governor of the Central Bank, Ministers of Planning and International Cooperation, and Finance Presidential Spokesperson Ambassador Bassem Rodi said that the meeting tackled the means of promoting bilateral relations between Egypt and the IMF. In light of the cooperation program that was agreed on lately to resume the Egyptian economic reform plan, President Sisi hailed Kristalina's visit to Egypt to participate in the climate summit COP27. For her part, Kristalina asserted that the IMF is resuming its cooperation and partnership with Egypt to enhance the economic reforms. The procedural session of the UN Climate Conference COP27 started in Egypt's Red Sea Resort of Sharm el-Sheikh. Addressing the opening session, Foreign Minister Sameh Shukri said it is imperative to review the challenges and prove the will to address the climate issues. He said the current ambitions are still below the climate objectives. He said the few past years witnessed awareness over the climate change adding that efforts must be intensified to address the climate change. He also said the joint aim of all participants is the most no noble, which is a better life for millions of people. The Executive Secretary of the UN Climate Change Agreement also addressed the session. The conference aims to come up with the rules of a new global climate pact in the 2021 UN Climate Summit COP26 in Glasgow, Scotland. The Glasgow Pact was issued. The Glasgow Pact is the first time a UN climate agreement mentioned the goal of reducing the fossil fuel usage. The pact marked a breakthrough in the efforts to resolve the rules guiding the international trade of the carbon market to offset emissions with the aim running out for steep emission cuts. The pact also urges nations to come up with the more ambitious climate plans. In 2020, the Kyoto Protocol. The International Climate Treaty expired five years prior to this date, exactly in December 2015. Kyoto's successor, the Paris Agreement, was agreed. The key agreement aims to limit the rise in the average global surface temperature. Following the procedural session of the COP27 on Sunday, Shukri held a press conference. He said it is important to work in a collective way to fend off the climate change damages. He said talks that took place on Sunday over compensating the climate change victims were satisfying. The delegates from nearly 200 countries gathered in the South Sinai Resort of Sharm el-Sheikh from November 6 to November 18 for the UN Climate Summit COP27. It is being built as the African COP amid hopes. The first climate summit to be held on the African soil will address the fears of the continent, which is least responsible for the climate change, observers hope. The summit will meet the continent's urgent needs. A study by the Carbon Brief News Service said last week that in Africa alone, extreme weather events have killed 4,000 people at least and displaced 19 million so far this year. This came as the toll of the climate-linked disasters mounts in debt-ridden countries across Africa. The governments are demanding that rich polluters pay for the harm their emissions have already caused, known as loss and damage. Richard governments rejected the call for a financial mechanism to address losses and damage at last year's climate talks in Glasgow and instead negotiators agreed to start a dialogue on financial compensation. All eyes are focusing on Egypt while hosting the UN Climate Conference, the COP27. At least 30,000 participants representing 190 countries are gathered. Stressing Egypt's vital role and great status, the Interior Ministry has put a strict strategy to secure such a global event and guarantees full security of Sharm el-Sheikh. On Saturday, Minister of Interior Mahmoud Tawfiq 
inspected the preparations implemented by the ministry's authorities to secure the climate summit. Head of Nile TV, Tagrid Hissin, also held the following interview with the head of the EU delegation to Egypt, Ambassador Christine Berger. On the sidelines of uh, the different activities here and our special coverage here on Night TV International of COP27, this history-making event in Egypt, we're really honored to have with us His Excellency Ambassador Christian Berger, head of the European Union uh, delegation to Egypt. Your Excellency, thank you so much for joining us and it's great to see you at such a history-making event as I said. Great pleasure being here and thank you for this opportunity of speaking with you. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, talking about this sense of partnership between Egypt and uh, the EU, and especially also in fighting climate change, we are joining hands together. Yes, indeed, and we have been doing this for quite some time. For us, uh, climate action is one of the top priorities, and you will see this in the composition of the delegation that will come from the European Union uh, tonight, actually, to uh, to, to Sharm el Sheikh, so it's the President of the European Council, the President of the European Commission, and during the next uh, 10 days we will also have three, four commissioners coming to take part in the ministerial days, uh, but also to speak with their counterparts on the Egyptian side, the, the, the ministers on the Egyptian side, because there are a number of important topics that we want to continue working on. One is, of course, uh, energy and the cooperation on the, on the development of renewable energy, so solar, wind, um, and then the other one, a very important one at the moment, is the production and the, and the generation of green hydrogen, uh, which is on a top priority also for the European Union. And uh, for the first time, you may have uh, seen for the first time, water is a topic for, uh, for COP27. So there will be also, uh, in the follow-up to the Cairo uh, Water Week, we will have important talks on water issues with our Egyptian counterparts. Yes, definitely, Ambassador, and it has been a long way to go. Uh, I know quite well that there has been a sense of partnership between Egypt and the EU working together for the different projects of Egypt's new republic, the different developmental projects bearing into consideration going green and the environmental factor. And uh, the EU has been putting its heavy weight uh, in that respect. Yes, um, and as I said, this is not only since yesterday. We have been doing this for a long time and we are very happy with this partnership and the, and the response um, that is there in creating something new in this country uh, and that has to do a lot with renewable energy so we have done a lot of work with Egypt on uh, solar energy uh, on wind energy for example we are supporting the, the construction of a wind farm uh, in the in the Gulf of Suez in the Gulf of uh, Said so there are many many projects also on solar energy on, on research on solar energy and in the partnership priorities that we agreed uh, earlier this year, uh, we've also agreed to make Egypt or to support Egypt's endeavors to become a hub um, for energy and renewable energy development in the Middle East and in Africa. Yeah, uh, this important COP, Your Excellency, COP27, is actually branding Egypt globally. Uh, Egypt is expected to speak the voice of Africa also at COP27. What are we expecting from this COP? What sort of messages, in your opinion? does COP27 send from charming charm to the world? I think, first of all, it is very important where this COP27 is taking place. It's taking place in Egypt, in an African country. So, yes, um, the theme will be very much focused on, on Africa, and we will be very supportive of that. Uh, because we have, we have said uh, time and again that we want to support the most vulnerable com communities. We want to make sure um, that the pledges that have been made in the past for those communities are being met. Uh, it has been extended a little bit, but uh, nevertheless, I think uh, this is, will be one of the messages um, that the financial pledges, for example, that, that were made, that were made uh, a few years ago, uh, or beginning at the Copenhagen meeting in 2009, that these pledges will be fulfilled, and it's a combination of governments, non-governmental organizations, civil society organizations, and private sector to come together to support the most vulnerable communities in this world. Yes, it's very important, as Your Excellency have, uh, has just mentioned, uh, the private sector put, uh, putting hand in hand with the governments. What we really need for climate action is also providing innovative solutions for uh, climate change, and this is actually happening. How are we going to build momentum on what is really happening in COP here? What's after? I've seen many ideas, uh, many projects that, I will, be, that, that will be presented here. 
people have already uh, told us a little bit what they're going to do. So on development of new technology, I think that's that's very important. Uh, on on discussions on risk uh, prevention, on risk management, again, these are very important uh, topics where also the private sector can come in. By, by developing new ways of addressing uh, this issue. So we will see a lot of presentations, and I hope that uh, these presentations will also take root in a commercial way, that this can be then uh, later on also rolled out and, and become available for uh, a, a bigger number of countries, countries that need uh, this new technology and new development. So in that sense, COP27 will, op or will offer a big opportunity to the private sector to, to really be innovative and to, to because this is, this is not only a, a, an issue for governments, it's also an issue for all of us, for private sector, for civil society, for all of us that, that are affected by climate. Mm -hmm. uh, I know quite well uh, that uh, uh, your excellency is uh, also paying special attention to more than one field, the field of environment definitely, and also education, because education means awareness. And awareness is very important if we're talking uh, climate action. Absolutely. Uh, so we have done a number of awareness actions over the, over the year here in Egypt. We do this in, in, in many countries around the world. So once a year we have, we have actually two important weeks in September and in October. One has to do with uh, public transport, um, how to promote public transport and to, and to get away, for example, to, uh, that everything you want to do, you have to do by car. No, you can also do use the train, the bus, the tram. And we are not only um, saying this, we're also doing it by supporting uh, the development of system for example in Cairo uh, but also the tram line rehabilitation in Alexandria so many practical projects that go hand in hand with with our policies and I think this this is one of the uh, one of one of the one of the messages that we want to promote here huh? yes definitely your excellency if we're going to prioritize the files especially after attending COP27 and after witnessing the recommendations and the sense of partnerships that are going to be held here. What would be uh, the priority file? Well, I think opinion? the main important file is uh, to reach the, the temperature goals. Uh, I think this, this, has, this is a very important topic for, for any COP, I would say, but this one in particular because it's, it's implementation and how to help the uh, most vulnerable communities to, to reach those goals and to, to, to support them in, in, in doing so. I think these are very important issues that uh, will be discussed in the next two weeks. Yes, uh, training is also very important and coaching vis-a-vis -vis climate action and also uh, making the youth be hands-on. And Egypt, under the leadership of President Sisi, is investing in the youth. So we're, see, we're going to see here at COP27 special sessions, actually, dedicated to the youth participation. How do you see that? And uh, definitely, with the EU, we have a partnership in training. Yes. I think we have talked to many young people over, over the last few weeks, and, and we had special events. And I, we can see the enthusiasm and the dedication of young people to address this issue. After all, it's their future. So I think there's a very strong drive uh, in, in, in addressing all, this, all, all these points. Education for us is also an important topic here in uh, Egypt. We have, a, we have a technical vocation training program. We actually, it's now program number two, where we, where we work with the government in setting up um, uh, institutions that can provide this technical vocational training. But we also come in on the other end when it comes to universities. We have a close cooperation uh, with, with Egyptian universities, between European universities, Egyptian universities, with the Erasmus uh, program, the Erasmus uh, Plus program, where we do an exchange program for students, but also cooperation between universities, so teachers can be exchanged and academic research can be done. And there's a second program, uh, which is now coming on stream, uh, which is called uh, Horizon Europe, which is a research and scientific program, where we get different uh, institutes, institutions to work together on, on scientific topics. This is the biggest program in the European Union when it comes to science and, and technology. And we hope that many uh, Egyptian institutions will take part in that. That would be great uh, since we are also, uh, you know, moving digitally and taking a long yes. path in that respect. So this is going to be also a great step on the road. I mean, digital is one of the of the big uh, goals that we have set for ourselves. So on the one hand is uh, uh, green, the Green Deal of the European Union, uh, to make the economy more sustainable and more green and, 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 and disconnect um, energy consumption from growth uh, of, the, of the economy. And digital is the other one, uh, which has been uh, a very important topic for you for uh, two years now. And a lot of research, a lot of scientific research is going into this in the, in, 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 
moment and there we hope to work closely with Egypt and Egypt will also take part in what we call a flagship project um, that we do uh, in the next in the next few years where we focus specifically on this issue. That's great. Uh, Your Excellency as you've mentioned that since COP27 is being held in Egypt that is in fact an achievement. Uh, your messages through Nile TV International to the world as we speak from COP27. Watch very carefully what is being discussed here. Uh, there are very important topics that are, that are being negotiated and, and discussed. And also, let's all of us, governments, civil societies, uh, private sector, all of us make sure that these goals will be implemented. Yes, thank you so much, Your yeah. Excellency Ambassador thank you. Thank you Christian Berger, Head of the EU Delegation to Egypt. That was His Excellency Ambassador Christian Berger, Head of the European Union uh, Delegation in Egypt, talking to us about his impressions. Definitely a, a strong bond between Egypt and the EU vis-a-vis -vis, uh, climate change action. And it is uh, in the key word or the magical word, which is togetherness. Together we can do a lot. Stay with us. We still continue our coverage of COP27 here on ITV International. Stay tuned. Also on the sidelines of the UN Climate Conference, Nile TV senior correspondent, the, the head of Nile TV, Tagrit Hussein, conducted the following interview with Jane Nelson for, from Harvard University. Thank you so much. On the sidelines of COP27, we're bringing you the beat of charming uh, Sharm here on Nile TV International, and we're really honored to have with us uh, Mrs. Jane Nelson from Harvard University. Mrs. Nelson, thank you so much for joining Nile TV. Thank you, Takreed, and great to be with you here today. Great to be with you, and it's great also to feel the beat of COP27. And the first impressions, how do you see the vibes? You know, the mother of the world uh, today is attracting people's attention. The mother of the world is absolutely attracting people's attention and I think this is going to be one of the most important conferences probably in our lifetimes. You know, former uh, UN Secretary General and, uh, uh, Kofi Annan said we are the first generation in history that can solve global poverty and we're the last generation in history that can prevent the worst effects of climate change and so I think the the, the responsibility of everyone here, the governments, the business leaders, the civil society leaders, the indigenous people's leaders, academic leaders, scientists, is going to be incredibly important this week as we move from ambition to, to action and really focus on implementation. Exactly, since we're talking from vision to implementation, and this is actually the motto, and this is actually what all the stakeholders here are currently uh, working on. COP27 is making history. It is going to be sending yes. messages from Egypt, from the mother of the world to the whole world, that it's high time that we work together towards a much more secure future vis-a-vis -vis fighting climate change. Exactly, and I think, and I think working together is going to be needed with between governments and we really need to overcome some of the geopolitical tensions for governments to work together and reinforce and re-energize international cooperation between governments and then also the multi-stakeholder aspects of the conference with business civil society and government working together financial institutions making commitments and we really need a, a multi-stakeholder approach yes it is and uh, it's also uh, extremely nice to find here everybody the youth are also participating and this is quite interesting because Jane as you know uh, Egypt the mother of the world invests in the youth and his excellency yep. president the Sisi is very much behind the youth they are the treasure of Egypt and uh, they are actually uh, our treasure to move forward so how do you see the youth also participating youth representatives and their role in uh, the cl in climate action how do you see that absolutely crucial and in fact I had the great opportunity to meet with some of the youth delegation half an hour ago and I think that you know the energy the focus the commitment the passion but also the very specific asks that young people are, are making um, and and really saying to us you know you, your generation haven't done it correctly now it's on our generation to, to take action. So I think they're, they're becoming you know, much more demanding than they've been in the past. I think there's enormous opportunity for youth, both from a, a you know, political engagement perspective, but also youth entrepreneurship. And we're going to see some great examples here in the innovation zone and in the green zone, as well as in the blue zone of youth entrepreneurs 
working together to find practical solutions as well as youth advocating to governments for change. So I think the youth presence is already strong and I think it's going to grow throughout the week and, and a very important presence and, and very practically focused, not, not just advocating but also demonstrating yes. what young people can yes, do. Yes, exactly, demonstrating willingness yeah. to act in action and as Jane said it is this issue of togetherness that we need we yep. need this collaborative work in order uh, to find solutions on the ground uh, Jane you've mentioned entrepreneurship and this is actually very important since we're talking uh, climate action and climate change the role yep. of entrepreneurs the private sector vis-a-vis uh, -vis putting their hands yeah. on uh, with the governments in order yeah. uh, to, to be focused and find unconventional solutions. What are we expecting? Again, I think a massive presence from the private sector, both private financial institutions as well as large corporations, as well as entrepreneurs and start-up companies. And, and I think you know, across the spectrum, we're, we're seeing companies beginning to take action, making commitments themselves, so net zero commitments in their own operations, their own supply chains, um, looking at how they can innovate new technologies, new financing mechanisms, new business models, new products and services um, to support the energy transition. Uh, opportunities to find ways to increase access to energy to low-income communities in a more re renewable sustainable way and we're also seeing business playing an advocacy role so so I think we're seeing business in three key areas you know, through its core business operations making its own net zero commitments um, through innovation and entrepreneurship and, and new uh, new approaches and through advocating for policy change so I think we're, we're seeing a, you know, a growing focus from the business community and from the financial sector it is, and uh, it's always great to see uh, what Jane is, you know, is, uh, focused on, which is uh, innovation. Innovation is considered to be the key yeah. if we're talking success of COP27. And here come all the stakeholders uh, joining forces together, sitting, yeah. think tanks, brainstorming new ideas, and coming out with the innovative solutions. How can we, like, you know, encourage those innovative solutions? It's always, you know, the key is in education as we say education yeah. and education yeah. and a sense of awareness for the people vis-a-vis uh, -vis the hazards of climate change what do you Absolutely. think Absolutely. so i think education plays a crucial role both uh, awareness of the hazards of climate change but also really giving people hope that we can take action that we must take action and we can have an impact um, and not to not to give up because we clearly face very challenging, challenging times at the moment, um, not only from climate, but from a range of other um, poly crises that the world is facing. And so I think education to uh, you know, inspire and motivate young people to take action is key. I think incentives are, are very important, so government incentives, financing incentives to get your business to, to take action. And then uh, policy, and, and, and we talk about innovation, I think not only from a business perspective, but we need, we need innovative new policies, we need new, new, new policies structures, new policy dialogues, which are more innovative than they've been in the past as well. Yes, Jane. Well, uh, a final question before we leave. Uh, let us more focus on messages that the mother of the world is sending throughout uh, COP27 that makes all the difference. As you know, uh, uh, Africa is pinning high hopes also on COP27. Egypt is speaking in the voice of Africa vis-a-vis uh, -vis the hazards uh, of yeah. climate change. Uh, this important COP, COP27, is branding Egypt globally. You know, look at the um, thousands of delegations and delegates who came here to Sharm el Sharm to attend this beautiful Congress. And they are all like ambassadors uh, for their yeah. own countries. They are going to go back home with numerous ideas and at the same time also applications, with, which really matters. Absolutely, and I think you know, ambassadors for action would be my, my takeaway. How can each of us both come here but leave as ambassadors for practical, on-the-ground action and implementation and collaboration, because that's the only way we're going to move forward. Thank you so much, Mrs. Jane Nelson.
from Harvard University, joining us exclusively on Live TV International and on the sidelines of our coverage of COP27. As Ms. Nelson said, let us all move forward together. Let us put this sense of togetherness high. Let us all act as ambassadors in action. And this is the way forward to achieve success. We still continue here uh, the beat on Live TV International from charming charm and covering COP27, making history on Egyptian soil.